What's up, everybody, and welcome to my Impact Wrestling Review. A lot of stuff going on this show tonight as the build to sacrifice, I should say, uh, continues coming on March the 13th. What does Impact really got going on tonight, huh? As, of course, we got Matt Striker and D'Lo Brown on commentary. We kick it off with a triple threat match to see who will become the number one contender for the X Division title. Black Taurus of the K, Ace Austin, and Chris Bay. Uh, good match to kick off the show, uh, given that, you know, all three of these guys won that six-man last week, so uh, this week they were going to see who's going to, you know, who's going to um, face the exhibition champion, which is TJP right now, so um, who was going to win this match right here? I kind of figured it was going to be Ace Austin, given that he did win that Super X Cup thing, which I'm surprised he just didn't get a title shot after winning that. I don't know what's going on with that right now, but it's best he did win, get since, the, you know, he's still technically a strong heel in this division right now. The test been a little bit up and down with Ace, but they protected him very well, and they still are. He ended up getting the uh, pin over uh, Chris Bay after doing the fold on him. Black Taurus, um, I'm liking this guy more and more I see, all right? I didn't really think he was a cruiserweight style and whatnot, but the guy can... um. He can catch out there. I will give him that. Um, he can still fly, and he's still like a powerhouse in a way, too. So I am digging this Black Taurus dude and putting him with the K. So I wasn't sure at first and whatnot, but I think they call, they got a good one from AAA, like I said before. But yeah, Ace Austin got the win, and he will be going for the X Division title at some point. Next, Jordan Ga Grace and um, <laughs> Jazz were talking to back uh, about going for the tag team titles. Uh, next thing you know... Care Hogan and Tasha Steeles come up, basically say, you know, we're going to be sitting watching as uh, Deanna Perrazzo beats you. But Jordan Gray says, I'm going to upgrade you to the platinum package. So uh, one of y'all two going to be added to this match for a triple threat later on tonight. Um, <clears throat> right after that, then, uh, we got Tennille Dashwood versus Havoc. Um, good match, I should say. Uh, Havoc takes a lot of L's to be a monster in this division, but... Uh, Tennille did end up getting the win. Okay match, I will say that. Of course, it was about distraction thanks to Caleb Conley. And Tennille ended up getting um, the win with the spotlight kick and whatnot. Right after, um, we started, what, kind of beating up Havoc still by, you know, beating, well, taking pictures of Havoc. Uh, ha um, Caleb Conley did. But Nevaeh came out for the save and ended up hitting her finisher onto Caleb Conley, taking off his neck brace also, leaving him on the ground. So, um... We'll see where they go with this whole Nevaeh versus Tennille thing. Uh, we didn't go to Sammy Callahan, which um, I'm getting tired of background music in these promos, but he was somewhere at Trey Miguel's, um, I guess, wrestling school or gym, I guess, and he was walking around, and there was a lot of awards that he has won, and um, one of them had, like, match of the year, and um, talking about the Rascals and whatnot, since they're not here anymore, where they're MSK now, well, two of them are. And basically, I guess they he saw one of the trainers, and he beat up one of the trainers then, then he beat up some more trainers, and next thing you know, I guess um, one of, like, um, I guess that was one of Trey Miguel's trainers or something, or, um, like, like, you know, wrestling school teacher, basically told uh, Sammy, saying, like, listen, he's not here, whatever your little death machine is or whatnot, uh, get out of here, okay? You must be living in your head rent-free, rent but uh, Sammy basically told his trainer, like, you're just a cripple. No name in this business that never uh, made it and whatnot. But his tra I guess the trainer told him that, listen, man, I've given my life to this business. You may have the notoriety and, and the money, but I've done a lot, okay? Uh, but next thing you know, um, I guess the trainer ended up saying that he's looking forward to Trey kicking uh, Sammy's ass. Sammy started beating up the wrestling school students and the trainer until one of them, I guess a trainee came in. And then I guess he was talking to him like, listen, let's talk, okay? I don't need to be here. All right, but let's let's just talk and we'll see this goes. I actually like this uh, uh, promo and whatnot. I did like that he kind of you know went, um, you know, to Trey's wrestling school and whatnot, or where he trained, and basically you know mess with him. The only thing I didn't like about this whole promo is that the background music is so loud you can barely hear Sammy Callahan or anybody else talking half the time. So I don't like. I, I really get tired of him doing this background music. They've been doing that for a lot of matches or promos at the time. It's louder than the damn wrestlers. I get sick of that shit. Uh, but moving on, no, they went to Swingers Palace, uh, once again, uh, I guess TJP was there, and Ace Austin and Alicia was there, Chris Bay, I guess, Austin and Chris Bay talk about, y'all, you need Fulton to win, and I guess, for some reason, 
TJP's got the money and everything, so he's predicting all this stuff. I, I don't know where they go with the Swingers Palace sometime. And I like Johnny Swinger. I think he's funny. I just don't get where do they really go uh, with with this Swingers Palace thing. Like, And why does that wad of cash? I'm sick of that wad of cash, okay? It, it, like, every week is that fucking wad of cash that keeps showing up. Like, enough already. Where is where is it going? It just hops around hands every week. What, where, did, where did this money come from again? Because I honestly forget, like Hernandez or something. I don't understand what's going on with that anymore. Uh, they had a Violent by Design promo. Um, Eric Young, I guess, told Diener that you must accept the, co the consequences after you failed last week. You didn't beat Jake something. So, um, you know, you have recent losses and you the, the disease could come back any time for all the failures you, you have done. So, we all, you know what you need to do. As Dean, I guess he went to another room, and Joe Doring was in there with him, and I guess they beat the living fuck out of him, and he ended up crawling out, and Eric Young basically lift him up, and he says, I'm doing this for you. And Dean said, I know. And they left him on the ground, walked away. I like these Violent by Design promos every week for some reason. Uh, next, we got another AEW paid promo from Tony Schiavone and Jacksonville Dixie right here. Um, or Boy Dixie. Basically, uh, talking about Revolution, that's all they really did was promote Revolution and their show for tomorrow night, and basically talk about We Are The Forbidden Door, and that Impact, New Japan, AEW, we're all one, but uh, I guess he said, we're the leader, and Impact's not the leader, you once were the leader, but I'm the leader. I, I, you know, I sit there and say this more and more every week, this whole partnership feels very one-sided. You know, maybe I'm jumping to conclusions too early on this, but so far, it's felt very one-sided, okay? Because even I kind of get sick of... I've said before, I get sick of the whole burial of Impact every week by Tony Khan here, and I said before, Impact, would it kill you to do your own pay advertisement on their show? Or something? Fight back? Come on now. It's bullshit. I'm sorry, but it is. Um, they had a Moose promo. Um, basically talking about this match with Rich Swan coming up at Sacrifice. Very good promo. Same with Swan and I want them too. Uh, next, Good Brothers and Finn Juice went against Reno Scum and Team Triple XL. Basically kind of a fodder match if you ask me. Uh, of course, it's supposed to push the feud between the Good Brothers and Finn Juice right here. Which the Good Brothers ended up getting a win with the Magic Killer. But then right after, they started arguing with Finn Juice then after that. Um, obviously they did make a match for Sacrifice, uh, coming up. The only thing I will say when it comes to uh, David Finley and Juice Robinson, can we get some promos for these guys? To actually, tell who they are. I know they said on commentary that yes, they were are were in New Japan. Well, they are in New Japan right now, but they were the IWGP Tag Titles. But can we get like a promo package that people that don't really watch New Japan kind of say like, all right, hey, these guys are from New Japan. This is who they are. Get a vignette or something on them, okay? I would like that. Uh, next, <clears throat> Brian Myers when he gets Eddie Edwards. It's, it's Matt Cardona. <laughs> That's funny. Um, basically, this match in a DQ. Now, I'm kind of glad Eddie Edwards didn't get the win. And I know this is pushing a feud between Myers and Cardona, the former edgeheads of WWE. Which, I guess, um, what? Myers took like a foreign object out of his boot and put it in his elbow pad to do his, uh, you know, big lariat. But Cardona stopped it and then they kind of started arguing. Eddie Edwards feels kind of lost right now, if you ask me. I don't really know where he's going, other than being crazy Eddie. So, uh, I wish they do something with that. Um, Deanna Perazzo and crew were in the back talking about, you know, how the match changed into a triple threat. Triple threat. Triple threat. Man, I'm messing up my words tonight. Uh, but, triple threat match. Basically, how they talked about, basically gro gloated about how they took down ODB last week. And that she's well equipped for any plan to change, even in a triple threat match tonight. As the main event was Deanna Perazzo, Kara Hogan, and Jordan Grace. Great triple threat. I enjoyed this main event. Not bad. Deanna got the win after, what, Jordan Grace went for her Vader bomb thing on the Kara Hogan. But Tasha Steeles pulled her out of the ring. And Deanna ended up getting the win with, like, a small package on her. Next thing you know, everybody ended up brawling with each other on the outside. Deanna was still in the ring. ODB end up showing up then and attacking Deanna and holding up the knockouts title, which will probably be a match of sacrifice. So, very good main event. I wish um, they really haven't had any opponents for Deanna lately. Mostly been focused on the whole tag division for a while with their titles. Deanna, she hasn't really um, kind of had anything going on 
as Knockouts Champion, but obviously, I guess our next opponent is going to be <clears throat> it's going to be ODB. So that should be good. I will say this: um, when it comes to some of these matches, I wish they would have waited till Rebellion and push it on Sacrifice for the Impact Plus show. I know Rebellion isn't until next month. I still think they should have did the title match between Moose and Swan at that time. But um, maybe they have another plan for that. I'm not really sure. Uh, but I don't know why they were pushing on the plus show. But a good episode. Solid show tonight from Impact. Um, enjoyable. Like I said, I get tired of that bad background music sometimes. Or well, a lot of times, I should say. I wish they need to get rid of that. So um, that's one thing to say. But like I said, good main event and good build up to sacrifice to what they're doing. So we'll see what happens when they get closer to that show. I just feel like they should save some of these bigger matches for... Um, their actual pay-per-view then promote the plus show okay with these um plus pay-per-view like shows in my opinion so other than that though um i'm done with this review comment subscribe follow me on twitter at hooded night 890 tell me what you think about impact tonight uh do you think this is a good show or not and um yeah just tell me what you think about it okay so other than that we'll be back for another nxt and AEW on wednesday night see you guys later i'm out of here peace I shouldn't already said wake up, wake up is the first of the month, but it is March Madness, but I'm not going to play the song right now because I'll probably get copyright for that shit. So, uh, yeah, I'm out. See you guys later. Peace.